Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. So, uh, we're coming to the end of the year. Um, you know, it's been a big year in the pen world, it's been a big year personally for me with moving house and with work things and so I thought, uh, like last year I did a top five pens and inks, I thought I'd do another one this year uh, as my second last video for the year. Um, so here it is. Now this video is probably best served by being sort of at my desk. So we'll sort of flip angle and uh, uh, show you the pens and the inks there and have a bit of a chat about them. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, show you what has rocked my world this year with pens and inks. So this uh, list isn't uh, pens and inks that were that came out necessarily this year. Um, it's actually a list although a couple of them are. It's a list that, uh, with a couple of honourable mentions in the pen department, um, that is pens and inks that I got to know this year, so that I, that I got this year, uh, even if they had been out for a while. Now, last year, a, a couple of comments were things like that I um, neglected sort of lower end or less expensive pens in my list, and, and that's sort of fair enough. Like, you know, a lot of the pens were either sort of intermediate or more in terms of the uh, the um, the cost or the way that they are uh, positioned in the in the market. So I wanted to include a couple of honourable mentions that fit into that category today. Um, as I said, these are pens and inks that I got to know this year. There were lots of I I still got a lot of sort of four or five dollar Chinese fountain pens this year, but. For one reason or another, they didn't rock my world, um, and so uh, yeah, they didn't make this list for that reason. It's not that they're not great pens or that I've above them or whatever. I still use them. I get them, but these are the pens that had an impact. Pens and inks that had an impact on me uh, in two thousand and eighteen. So I hope you find this video useful uh, and interesting. So let's um, let's get going. Okay, here we are with uh, the pens and inks of 2018. Uh, I want to start with the honourable mentions, and I'm actually going to start with, uh, and this is just with pens, I haven't done honourable mentions for uh, ink. Um, these are th uh, three models of pen that are budget friendly, that I acquired this year, two that were released this year, and uh, that I think are actually really, really good uh, value. So the first, and th this first one uh, might be going through a bit of a change. Uh, it is the um, Nemesine Singularity. Um, it's the it's the cheapest, just about the cheapest pen Nemesine produced. Um, and you know, it's it's a really nice sort of basic sort of pen model cartridge converter, uh, number six nib. I have this with the 0 0.06 stub. Really lovely pen. Writes beautifully. Um, as one of the f another one of those sort of few stub nibs that I really really love, um, so we'll just do a quick writing sample here. Um, I think the ink is Ackerman Shocking Blue. So yeah, really great pen, great size, really affordable. Uh, pick them up while you can now because I think they're gonna go through a bit of a change. The next is the Keiko Retro. Um, this pen launched this year and sort of took a lot of pen users um, by surprise. It's clearly modeled off um, the Parker 51 in a lot of ways with this sort of slightly different um, clip, uh, but it's a really cool, Pen. I love the color. I love the color scheme of the whole line. Um, it's got a really nice nib on it, uh, one that I have um, really enjoyed writing with. And uh, yeah, so this is the Keiko. That was bad alignment on my behalf. It does have a sweet spot, this nib, I will say that. And the ink here is Dimeline Pumpkin, which is my favorite uh, ink in this pen. I'm riding around a tripod, so it's a bit of a strange angle. Um, but yeah, a really nice pen, really affordable, uh, and 
widely available and really worth looking at. The last one is from Twisby. This is the Twisby Go. Now, there are two colors here. We've got the, the sapphire blue and the smoke. So, these pens are divided people. I love them. I think they're a really, really great pen. As I said, I've got two here, two different nibs. The filling system on this pen with the spring-loaded um, plunger is amazing. Uh, I like the fact that this pen doesn't have a clip. I like how robust the pen is. People were complaining about the fact that it's made of cheaper materials than the Eco. It's a cheaper pen, guys. And for the price, this pen writes amazingly. I'm going to do a quick writing sample with both um, because the nibs are very different. So this is the Twisby Go. And this is the Fine with Krishna pencil. So puts down a decent line, it's wet, it's fairly smooth, but then you get to the medium. This pen, uh, this is Robert Oster True Blue. Watch out for a review of this ink next year, sometime early on in the year. Like, it is just a really good pen. Like, all these pens are great pens for their price. They're amazing. This pen comes in at under $20. You know, amazing. There may not be the $4 Chinese pens on this list, but, you know, they didn't rock my world this year. These four pens, in this sort of budget realm, and even well above their price range, these really, really worked this year. Okay, but now, let's move on to what we're all here for, which is the top five pens and inks of 2018. So, I'm going to start with number five. Have them here. So. This uh, pen was, it's a, it's a model that a lot of people are familiar with, and a brand that a lot of people are familiar with. It's Franklin Christoph, uh, and the pen is the Model 31, which is the Omnis. Um, I have it with a broad nib. This pen can be eyedroppered and looks incredible eyedroppered. I just prefer to use cartridge converters. Um, and so, but this pen's size is amazing. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give three little points on each, uh, pen and ink as we go through, and I've inked my number five pen with my number five ink and up to number one with number one, uh, which happens to be, the number one happens to be the most common pairing that I've had for the last couple of months. So let's talk about the pen and then we'll talk about the ink. So the pen, it, like the nib on this particular one, the broad uh, nib that I got from Franklin Christoph, which is, a, I believe a Yovo nib, is phenomenal. Um, broad and wet and really delicious. I love this frosted finish. Now, I'll just unscrew this pen so that you can sort of hopefully get like a sense of some of that. That material is just gorgeous. Like it's a, it's beautifully smooth and polished on the outside and has this sort of sanded quality on the inside, um, which means when it's inked, it looks really cool to see the ink sort of moving through all of that uh, when it's inked as an eyedropper. Um, so I love, the, yeah, I love this finish. Now also, this pen is the perfect length for me, the perfect diameter, and it, the perfect weight. The only one downside to this pen is this sort of slightly sunk nib section. And the ink sort of just collects in there, uh, and that's a real pain. But everything else about this pen, I absolutely love. In fact, if that wasn't the case, this pen would have been higher on this list, no doubt about it. Now the ink I have in here today, is from Sailor. Um, I have it in the Shikiori bottle, which is the smaller uh, one. It is Tokiwa Matsu, which is this sort of uh, pine green sort of color. You'll see it in writing. What I love about this ink is it's wet. It's great. It's really well saturated and has some sheen, but not a crazy amount of sheen. Uh, and you know what? More than anything, I just really love the color. So let's do a writing sample of the Franklin Christoph. Franklin. I cannot write Christoph. 
you're just going to have to imagine that says Franklin Christoph. Uh, 31, ominous, with Sailor Toki, Tokiwa Matsu. Um, as you can see, it's a nice sort of yeah, piney forest green colour. It's really lovely. Um, and it does sheen, it does shade, um, but not overly, not too much. You know, you sort of get a bit of a sort of gold sheen on there, but and even hints of sort of a red, but uh, just a really beautiful ink. Okay, let's move to number four on my list. Now, the number four pen would be much higher on a lot of people's lists, but it's still a relatively new pen to me, and I'm still getting to getting to know it. We're still starting our relationship. The pen is the Pelican M805. Now, I reviewed the M800 and wasn't overly taken with the nib on that particular pen, but I knew what a pen it could be and how right it felt in my hand. Um, so, the ink I partnered uh, this with on this occasion, my number four ink is a Robert Oster. It is gray seas now this was in i think uh i want to say the 1980s collection or something like that this is a really lovely uh blue gray colored ink um so let's just talk through each of these so we've got the what i consider to be the perfect size pen here with the pelican m800 fits the hand absolutely perfectly and is just a joy to hold it's got an excellent smooth nib with fabulous line width. Um, it's not a flexible nib at all, but the natural line it puts down in that sort of broad medium is really, really lovely. But most importantly with this pen, the build quality is astounding. Those threads are glorious. It feels sturdy. The clip is great. The threads on the, um, the piston are like you're not even operating it. They just run so smooth. It's absolutely great. Now this ink, uh, as I said, this is almost for me the perfect grey with hints of blue and purple and all of that. It's for me, it's dark enough for work use, uh, but also has a hint of something that's uh, quite different about it. Also, what I love about this ink is that the performance is outstanding. It cleans easily. It doesn't bleed or feather almost anywhere, even in a wider nib like this. And uh, it has some nice shading properties and no sheen, which for me is almost a selling point in itself. So here we have the Pelican M805. Uh, this is a medium. And the ink is Robert Oster. Gray Seas. Now, you can see that's a lovely ink. It goes on quite blue, uh, like a nice sort of light blue, and sort of dries slightly greyer, which is a, a quality that I think is quite beautiful in this ink. Um, it's just lovely, and it really appeals on, on a lot of levels, this ink. So I'm yeah, I was really glad to sort of come across this relatively late in the year, just like the, the pen itself. So number four pen, the Pelican M805, with the ink uh, Robert Oster Grey Seas. Next on the list is a pen from Diplomat. Now, Diplomat is a German pen company, uh, and this is the Excellence A2, and the, color, the pen is the Evergreen. Another recently acquired pen, uh, but one that is one that I'd wanted for a long time and was so glad when I got it. The ink that I partnered this with is not necessarily the best partnership uh, for the pen this color, but it's the way that it sort of worked out. It's a KWZ ink, it is menthol green. Um, an, an ink that performs really beautifully and also I have to say these bottles that the KWZ inks come in are perfect nice wide opening really stable good amount of ink and you can fill quite low so that for me that's just about the perfect bottle as well I'll try and put that in there okay so the points so what we've got is a, a pen that the fit in the hand and the balance of this pen is outstanding. Um, it's a good length, it's a good weight, and the weight is perfectly balanced down towards the nib. 
Um, it's got a good, sturdy, smooth steel nib. These Diplomat nibs, for anyone who's used them, they're just Yovo nibs, but they must, they're must they tuned in-house and they are close to perfect. You do not need a gold nib if you have a steel nib that writes like this. The other thing I love about this pen is the elegant and refined design. Now the clip isn't gonna to be to everyone's taste, that sort of design, I think it looks great. And I think this pen is a classic, uh, you know, classic design and very, very classy. The ink, it's wet, it's got a great vibrant color and it performs really well on a whole heap of different sorts of paper. I use everything from barren fig paper to cheaper papers like Muji paper uh, and of course Rhodia and Tomo River and things like that. Um, and this ink just does not falter. Uh, so I want to try a whole lot more of the KWZ inks. I think they're great. This particular one, menthol green, was a color that I got in a, a sample set and uh, fell in love with it, bought a bottle instantly. So more coming of those. Here we have the Diplomat Excellence A2, once again a medium, and the ink is KWZ Menthol Green. So you can see it's a really lovely vibrant, I wouldn't say turquoisey sort of green, but it's certainly got hints of that uh, in it. And it's, I think, just really lovely. It's vibrant. It, it stands out nicely on the page, which I really like. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily use this for sort of the most sort of professional writing that I have to do. Um, but for anything that needs to sort of stand out, headings, editing, marking, that sort of thing, this is a really nice color. And it's not a standard green. Um, you know, you can see it in comparison to the Sailor green there, like they're very, very different. Uh, and I just think it's a really beautiful ink and it's one that I've used a lot this year, uh, particularly towards the end of this year. Uh, really beautiful. Okay. Next we have number two. Not going to really surprise many people. Anyone who's tried this pen will not be surprised. This is the Pilot Custom 823. This is an outstanding pen. In most people's collection, this would be the pen to end all, to rule all pens. And for me, it almost is as well. It is just the most phenomenal writer. I have this with a broad nib. It's smooth, it's wet, it's glorious. Now the ink I've partnered this with, I can't show you the actual bottle because mine is still on the way. I have used two samples of this ink already uh, in the last, well this year. So, you know, not, not a whole heap, but every time I use it, I love it. I ordered a bottle. Um, it is an Ackermann ink, and uh, this is how they look. Um, in, and it has some of the best bottles on the market. I love these bottles. This uh, is shocking blue. Uh, but the ink that is on my list this year is uh, number 13, Simplicity's Violette. Um, a beautiful, vibrant shade of purple, and in this pen it writes just beautifully. So, let's talk about this. The pen. It's got a beautiful, smooth nib. Uh, it's a writing experience unlike just about any other. Um, the filling system is the VAC filler, uh, and it's an amazing filling system. Um, as I said, you can see, I've got the valve open there, but you can close it off for traveling and all of that. It allows for either a, a, a nice sort of generous flow or an incredibly wet flow, which uh, is how I like it. Uh, and you do get a lot of ink into this pen. The other thing I love about this pen is, once again, the size in the hand. I don't like to post my pens necessarily, and with this you don't need to. The section is a great width, it's a great length, it sits nicely in the hand, and the distance between your finger and the end of the nib onto the page is wonderful. Um, so yeah, and isn't just, like, just looking at that nib, it is just beautiful. Um, has gold nib on it, all of that. Uh, so yeah, it's just a wonderful, wonderful pen. So let's, so what we have here is the Pilot Custom 823 with a broad nib, so it's a gold nib, so it's, a, it's got a lovely feeling on the page. And the ink is Ackermann Simplicities. I hope I spelled that right. 
violet. Now, I hope I'm saying these things right as well. Obviously, I, you know, I have experience with a lot of languages, but some of you just, you can't know every language. Um, so you can see there, it puts on a lovely broad wet line and that ink is just beautiful. Um, it's one of the truly unique, beautiful, very romantic writing experiences uh, that I have in my collection. And last but not least, and this won't come as a surprise to anybody who follows me on Instagram or who follows me here on YouTube, my number one pen for 2018 and probably for the rest of my life is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Now I have this in the full size version, not the MIDI, uh, and this was an, ex an extravagant purchase that uh, I don't regret for a second. So uh, the pen is obviously, as you know, made from lava and all of that. There's lots about it. You can watch my review. Uh, it's all there. Uh, so check it out. These, this pen is remarkable and makes me very, 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 very happy. Now the ink I've partnered this with, once again, will come as no surprise to anyone who's seen any of my videos on this. It is a Diamine ink. It is Diamine Oxford Blue. Now this ink comes in a range of different formats and bottles. So here we have the 80, here we have the 30, and here we have it in cartridge form. So I really love this ink. Um, and I use this, I have, I've had this inked up, uh, I think I've tried three different inks now in this pen on about eight fillings. The other ones got one filling each. So Dymine 1864 Blue Black got one filling and one of the Robert Oster Blues, I think it was Blue Water Ice, got one filling. No, Soda Pop Blue, sorry, got one filling. And they were great in this pen, but there's something about this ink in this pen. It's just really, really special. So let's talk about them uh, in a bit more detail. Um, so the pen, it's a great size pen, fits perfectly. And in the end, as I think I've said a million times, I prefer function over form. Um, if the pen doesn't work for me, doesn't fit in my hand, doesn't feel nice to write with, I don't use it. So this for me is absolutely perfect in my hand. It's a great weight. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Also, it's got a, one of the, the nicest nibs. It's smooth, it's super, super wet. Uh, and I just, I'm so lucky that the nib is as good as it is. Thank you so much to Appleburn Pennon who tried out the pen for me before I purchased it. Um, I got it through them and I, I requested that they check it to make sure it wrote beautifully and they, you know, because there are issues with the, with the Visconti nibs, we can all agree on that. But this one came and it is absolutely perfect. The last thing about this pen is the cool factor. It's made of lava. Like, you do not get many pens made of interesting materials like this. You get lacquered brass or you get sort of acrylics. Uh, well, clear acrylics in that case, or let's face it, plastic. Um, but this is made of lava, and that is exciting. Um, so, just such a great cool factor. Now with this ink, it's a great wet flowing ink. It's dark with a little bit of shading. It's almost a blue-black, and blue-black is my favorite ink color, but this just has a little bit more something to it. Um, and yeah, it sits in that sort of happy place between dark blue and blue-black. It's just a really remarkable ink. Uh, and if I had to pick one ink to, if I had to have one ink for the rest of my life, Diamine Oxford Blue would be it. It's not necessarily my favorite color. I love Robert Oster Tranquility um, and I love the Simplicity's Violet, but this ink for everything that it does and every, the way it performs and the use in professional circumstances and all of that, it's very, very, very cool. So here we have This is a bronze, bronze age, and it's a medium nib, although, like looking at that alongside the Pilot Broad, it's almost broader. Um, and the ink is Diamine Oxford Blue. So you can see how beautiful and wet that pen writes. Um, trying to write around a tripod here and everything. 
get some decent sort of color on the page. Um, it's wet. See, I like this ink because it's it's wet, but it's not like super wet. It does dry. There are some blues that just do not dry. I find things like a majestic blue, the dry time is just a little bit too long. Whereas this is nice and dark. It's and in this pen, it's got some really great uh, depth to it. And uh, yeah, it's it's amazing that my number one ink and my number one pen are such great friends, and I'm so glad. And I think they probably help each other climb the list. Uh, but it's really really remarkable. So. That is, for me, my top five pens and inks that I got to know in 2018. Just recapping, the Franklin Christoph Model 31 with Sailor Tokiwa Matsu, the Pelican M805 with Robert Oster Grey Seas, the Diplomat Excellence A2 with KWZ Menthol Green, the Pilot Custom 823 with Akaman Simplicities Violet, and the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age with Dimine Oxford Blue. Five great pens, five great inks, and really a pretty awesome 2018. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, that was my top five pens and inks of 2018. I uh, hope you found the video useful and interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch. If you've got any questions or products or anything uh, you'd like to sort of discuss, uh, you can comment here or on one of my other platforms. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. I'd love to know what your top pens and inks were for this year, uh, whether they're new this year or whether they were new to you this year. Um, 2019 for me is going to be the year of exploring a few different things with pens. As I've said in other videos, I want to get some colour into my collection. Uh, not so much with ink, but with actual pens. A lot of them are sort of more or less sort of on the on the neutral scale. Um, I also really want to start playing with a few more vintage uh, pens. I'd like to get a vintage Estabrook and a few things like that. So stuff that I'm looking at doing. Uh, so maybe you'll see some of those on my list for next year. Uh, and uh, I hope this has been a good year for you. And once again, thanks for watching. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.